Welcome to From an Educator, and this episode is called Declutter, and yes, it's about decluttering things, making things more organized, and it's what my basic hope was for this summer, which I'm finally getting to, so let's uh, discuss some of that. Welcome back to From an Educator. I'm Mr. James, an educator. (sighs) <sighs> and I've been busy. This is uh, show number 69. It's titled Declutter, and I basically need to do this with my life. So this is coming out pretty late. Uh, it's currently a Thursday. It is the 5th yep, of August, and yeah, it's morning. I, uh, I've got a few things to do today, but you know, I had to fit this in. I really wanted to talk. I, uh, I wanted to meet up with Mr. Ritchie at some point, but uh, I know he's really busy and, you know, yeah, just, just been busy all over. Uh, last time, uh, I spoke, I believe, uh, maybe with Mr. Ritchie can't really remember right now. Uh, no, actually it was, uh, I remember it was an episode on hormesis. Yeah. That was December 68. And I mentioned that I have a few shows coming up, gigs, as I call them, as a freelance musician, and I hit those gigs. Uh, Little did I know that I was contacted uh, the day that summer school ended, sorry, just bringing a microphone in, to play uh, an extra show because a band had canceled, so... I was called and I said, yeah, sure, I will do it. I'm still getting over the shell shock of five weeks of summer school. And yeah, I accepted it and was kind of the first time this year and actually a year and a half that I played a duet with another person. So just me being a accompanist to someone singing. So I played and they sang and try to get uh, a different setup working you know I work it out of my head and I bring the equipment and then it comes to being the uh, electrician to get the electrical stuff to work basically because you know depending on what instrument I'm using and how I'm going to rig it up to the PA system and yeah it didn't turn out so well but the next day that was a Friday the next day Saturday that was a gig that turned it out amazingly well because I, I rethought through, I thought through everything a little bit better and tried a different setup. And that surprisingly something I haven't used in like 20 years worked amazing. And then the same thing sort of happened for Sunday, kind of on those coattails, of course, you know, every time you show up to play someplace, something breaks and yeah. And then you also realize things that, that, you know, were a little bit of a nuisance, one time and because there were three days in a row of these gigs uh the nuisance got confounded each day uh basically by sunday i had to make some choices like what do i need to buy to make it easier and i do that every single time i play something doesn't work right you pay money to make it work right and it could just be comfort and that's one of the big reasons why i want to talk about declutter today even though i have like a dozen subjects I've been running through my mind that I want to talk about. I figured this is a great uh, thing to talk about, especially since, you know, for those that are listening as teachers, you have to declutter your life before you get into the clutter that the students are going to bring to you when school starts. And in my case, in less than a month. So not like I haven't already been five weeks in summer school, but yeah. So welcome back to show number 69. and. Let's go to my main life just quickly to touch on a few things. Uh, first of all, uh, COVID-19 spikes are crazy. Uh, it was for a long time, like, you know, in the low single, di- like double digits, you know, and even like I heard single digits, like, oh, five people had it the other day, like, wow. And now it's up to uh, triple digits. Uh, like I think 136 the other day. So I feel like it's going to be another thing on this COVID-19 birthed podcast that we have to start talking about COVID-19 again. And we're going to have to make a separate slide for that or whatever format I decide I'm going to start using. 
because I do have the, the better system now and I have some options as far as how I edit these videos. <sighs> but I already mentioned the four days of events that I had. Uh, the fourth day, I actually went to another state uh, with Mr. Ritchie and his family and we went to a very popular theme park that children enjoy. And this is in New Hampshire. And uh, yeah, it's, it's funny because driving there, when you're within like four or five miles away, you get to see uh, all these run down. There's another amusement park that was run down. Uh, this is a place we went called Santa's Village. And of course, if you've listened to this podcast long enough, you know that how we feel about specific holidays and such and, you know, whatever. But it's, it's more of just an experience of rides and just everything is in one separate place. And this place is really nice because it does involve a lot of like, it has animals there, real animals there. And they even have trees all throughout the park. So you're not walking in like a concrete jungle. You're walking through a forest pretty much. And, oh, here's a shop that sells this. Oh, and here's a, a ride and such, and everything seems to be clean and well-maintained. And I guess they, they operate year round. So, and this is like in contrast to another theme park that's in, you know, within a 45 minute vicinity that I didn't really enjoy too much. I'm not gonna talk about that one, but think about nursery rhymes. <laughs> so we went there uh, and course on the way there there is a park called six gun city that had been shut down i don't know maybe 10 20 years and it's just a ghost town <laughs> and you also see several bed and breakfasts that are or and, and like motels and like little cabins stuff like that just been that have been run down that haven't been occupied for maybe a decade or more and it just kind of looks depressing oh there we go let me sign back up to my thing so yeah, that was uh, interesting. It was a busy day. It was a long day. Uh, and I'll talk about it a little bit later with a rant because <laughs> being uh, someone in, in my certain diet and lifestyle, uh, I had a hard time with food there. And I want to get into that a little bit more detail and more like scathingly later, right? So the other thing is I'm writing a term paper right now for a summer class I'm taking. Uh, and in the beginning, it was like, oh, no, I have to do this. And you have to do it with a partner and no partner chose to work with me or was a sort of a randomized way to like be partnered up. But once I got interested in, you know, finding a subject and I found something that related to my past work as an organizational psychologist, you know, my master's degree, my thesis that I had on that one of them, uh, I found exactly the direction I want to go in. And I just started writing. And yeah, the papers is a good portion done, at least 70%. Uh, and I'll have a chance, you know, the next few days to finish it. And yeah, I can't wait to uh, make the slides and talk about it. And that's just one of the things that surprisingly, I enjoy, I enjoy graduate level work. You know, I don't know. I like writing papers. I've been doing it for such a long time. I have a sort of a flow to it. So the other big thing is I need to prep for the new year of school and get things together. And I've been writing in a little folder I have right here, a little notebook, a folder along with it that I just fill with ideas and I use different colors because I forget certain things that might have to stick out that maybe I want as a priority. And I just write. And it is, uh, it's got quite a bit of few things in it already. Uh, I'm already, I've been taking my room and remodeling it, changing it. And I just kind of want to feel more comfortable in that space. Now, the fact that we have a completely different schedule, we have the full population coming back, we may have to be masked again. That is no problem with me. But I feel like they're not going to be as diligent with the cleaning, and I still want to be. And I'm going to have everything set out, uh, all the chairs and my mats that I normally cycle between in my classes, everything is going to be out. 
because I, I don't have time between classes to switch. They, they're working on a different schedule this year and I still have to figure out how it's going to work, but it doesn't look like I have a lot of space in between the seven classes I have to see during the day. So I've got to make it work. I've also got to figure out uh, how I'm going to eat, get nutrition in there and, and like what I should be uh, doing to prep so that I can, you know, easily access everything in my room. But yeah, so that is the last little big point in the slide, mask or no mask. Mask, of course, I'm still waiting for the mask that I uh, paid money for on uh, Kickstarter to come in and it's going to be run. It's going to be run. And I'm, I'm sort of setting up a vortex in my room as well with fans that I'm going to try to work out. But so many unknowns, which is why I love to plan and declutter. So first little thing I want to talk about today, first uh, sort of segment is finding the new me. And now this is dedicated to anybody who is looking to help themselves. Honestly, I feel like this podcast becomes a self-help thing when it's just me talking. But that's not a problem because I'm constantly looking to improve upon myself, constantly looking to make things better. And I've slowly, I'm doing that. Uh, there's one in interesting thing that's on a, a music note that I want to mention here. I use music instruments as tools to make sounds, to fill in gaps I need in like a band I play with or what I might need to use to kind of like be that missing part, you know, another little cog in the railway, if you want to think of it that way. And recently I've looked over what I own and, you know, I've done this in the past and I have had a few things on my mind for a while that I need to get rid of that I need to sell or give away or whatever. Cause I just, I just, there's things I don't need anymore, but Recently, I, I looked at uh, I have a few electric guitars, and I've been playing one that I didn't expect that I would uh, enjoy again. And honestly, I, I kind of almost thought I was going to leave this guitar at the school, even despite the fact that it might be, uh, you know, taken and used and whatever. And now it's like that. No, this is this guitar really kind of speaks to me again, and I feel like maybe, you know, I've been playing this, this for quite a while. And, you know, you, you, you picture yourself as someone else using a specific, I don't know, tool or instrument. And that's how you want to define yourself. And, and yes, it is true. Those that own multiple instruments and guitars, you know, come in all different shapes and sizes and, and feels and this and that. Some people define themselves off like one type of guitar, one type of look they want. And it's a look, but it's, you know, it's a feel as well and stuff like that. And I kept defining myself as this sort of like heavy metal musician. Like I need these, these faster, I call them like a trick guitars that, that can basically give me all these tools, you know, higher registers, which means more frets, I whammy bars that I can do several different things with. And, you know, and there's a lot of this stuff that is expensive. It's also hard to maintain, you know, certain tools, parts of the guitar that are hard to like maintain, keep them sounding in tune when they have to have all these other bells and whistles on them. And I keep thinking to myself, like, I need a guitar that does that. Well, I, I bought a guitar that was kind of like that. It didn't end up being what I exactly wanted, but I was like, ah, I'll, I'll use it. And I've used it for a while and I, you know, it sounds all right, but it seems to be a little bit heavier than the other guitars. And I went back to an earlier guitar I was using and it just feels so much better and more comfortable. And it, and it offers me this versatility that I haven't, gotten from the other one and so now i'm thinking i'm going to sell the other one it's just not me and it's it's just that one little spot of a tool that i need to do that sort of like trick playing you know that i call when you're trying to play fast and, and try to you know flourishing stuff that's you know more like oh wow look at this showing off but it just says that doesn't seem to be me anymore. I, I seem to want a, an instrument that can sort of work the whole group together. 
and and it just kind of fills in these gaps rather than to be something that's showy and I don't know it's just not me anymore and I still might find an instrument that has that just so I can do a few things on it because it's one of the things I don't want to lose is skills and technique but I just don't define myself as uh, somebody who needs to show off it's not a big deal you know I have gigs planned I have it's things are in the books I'm looking until the end of the year right now and I can fulfill everything you know guitar wise on this specific instrument that I have so I'm pretty much set and you know what I want to keep things simple so that is part of the big thing with uh, finding the new me is searching for comfort. You need to find comfort. What is comfortable? Uh, instruments I'm playing, I'm more comfortable on. There are a few things I need to change and maybe substitute a few instruments out to be more comfortable. And it's just for the fact that you know things weigh a lot or they're too bulky or they just, I'm not getting the sound I want. I'm not getting the response I need as fast as I need it. And there is a challenge of putting things together that don't belong together. You know, specifically, you know, they belong together, but they, they kind of don't work well together. And then finding a way to do that, you might know that if you have to like ever put cables together, you don't have, you need a one cable and you have to buy an adapter, but then that adapter needs another adapter. And then you, you end up this daisy chaining a whole bunch of different things together just to make this one thing work. Whereas you probably could have started off by buying something that already had that built into it and you wouldn't need the adapter. And it's just that sort of thing that I've had, I've kind of amassed equipment over the years that doesn't all work together and I've made it work together. But the only thing that it works with together is me. I'm the only factor, the variable, because I make it work. Otherwise, you know, these instruments don't play well together. And I'm starting to get to a point where I want everything to play well together because I want to just to be able to go in and be an engineer and work things out and just make things happen like that and get a better sound and have to use less energy because that's called being efficient. So spontaneity is the new pleasure. I wrote one of those bullet points here. Spontaneity, honestly, I look forward to that. I look forward to, I plan so many things out. I still am following my schedules. And yet every now and then, and I think as happens every day, I try to throw something in that I don't expect to happen. I kind of make it happen. Just something that can be uh, completely different. You know, right now I'm writing a term paper and that's different. That's different than what things have been like for the past year and a half. So it's spontaneous, but I also just certain things during the day I might spontaneously do. I might uh, decide to cook something different. I might decide to go someplace. I just try to do something different. And that's my new way of like, oh, this is my free time being used wisely. And I call it the new pleasure because as we mentioned last week with those that always are always seeking pleasure, it's hard to break out of that. You need this sort of tiny bit of stress response to keep make sure that you're uh, you can adapt better and it's hormesis your body needs that sort of thing to survive and so my little pleasure is to break out of that every now and then with something that's spontaneous so that my body reacts a little bit differently and i like that feeling of like oh this is new how do i do this so maybe it's another form of stress because spontaneity spurs you know fear of the unknown but it is something that is interesting. I, I encourage everybody to try that sort of thing. Priorities are changing. I am changing my priority priorities around of what I care about and how I do things. And that I don't know how that's going to affect this show. I mean, we're late today only because I haven't had a chance the past four days or so to do this and sit down in a in a little reasonable manner. But I, uh, I wanted to, I, and I thought of doing something when I was driving in the car and just kind of playing the video, but I thought, eh, you know, I'm going to eventually do something like that. I'm not, I haven't been in the car solo yet, but I will be actually this Saturday driving to a, uh, another place in New Hampshire to play music. 
Uh, and yeah, I might try uh, from the road. We'll see if that works. Uh, I can, of course, edit that out if it doesn't. And then you'll get another one of these or something with We Are the Educators. So, but my priorities are changing and what I re really care about and think that's a good thing. Uh, I still have priorities in health and wellness and, and taking care of myself. But other than that, I'm figuring out where I can use my time best. And honestly, that's one of the biggest things I'm going to talk about with decluttering. It's just using your time the best way that you possibly can. The other thing is figuring out how I can help more. How can I help others more? How can I help others? Because then that helps me. But being a part in their life to show that uh, I respect them and I value them. And then having it become a better environment for me to be in, a better atmosphere. And that's kind of the reason why I'm looking at things I don't need and decluttering because I know someone else might be able to use them. Honestly, it's not even about owning something or getting money for something. It's about removing something from my life that's holding me back. And that can be, that can be everything. That could be a mug that you don't enjoy. Honestly, just simple things that you just, you're tired of looking at, get rid of it, change it. We'll talk about that in a moment. So the last little point on this guy slide is I, I feel a second wind. Have you ever heard of that expression, a second wind? So I got a second wind. Basically, you know, you do something, your first wind is you're, you're excited about doing something, you got all this energy and you eventually get tired and worn out and maybe something novel happens or you get an idea and you get this second burst of energy. And that's kind of what I'm, I'm looking at right now. Feel like I get this second wind, this new idea about everything. And it, it, yes, it is partially informed by the five weeks I went through summer school and, and learning about how that worked out, being a classroom teacher instead of being a unified arts teacher. Also about this class I'm taking, uh, about second language acquisition and applying that to music which I'm going to do because music as a second language is something I'm looking into right now. And the other fact is just being around uh, the environment that I'm in, uh, where I live and, and just, just looking at things and, and scrutinizing, is that going to work for me for the fall? Thinking about how I may be stressed and how I need my environment to be less stressful, more nurturing and help me when I need things. So things need to be more accessible. I mean, honestly, that's the way to do it. If, if you saw how I have instruments and equipment and how I set things up, it's all about ease of playing and, and so that it's easy for me to access things. I have a guitar pick. And honestly, this is a good idea. Uh, if I show you quickly. For those that are not uh, watching this, uh, this is going to be something that I can describe. But here is uh, the guitar that I've gone back to. It does have flowers on it, but it's just a decal. Uh, this is a Fender Stratocaster, pretty uh, common body type shape. This guitar has been around for like 60 years, this sort of style, if not more longer. Uh, but I want you to notice this. This is a little, I have a little holder for a pick. And this is my guitar pick I hold. And a lot of people put it down at the bottom, the butt end they call the guitar, where you like put the jack in to plug it in. I like to keep mine up top near this, this little part they call one of the horns, right at the top horn, because my hand when I'm playing is right here. So I can pull the pick out, play with it, slide it back in, and I've got my fingers to play. And I go back, I go in between that sort of thing all the time. And it's just, it makes more sense that it's right here. And everyone looks at me when they see this instrument, they go, why, why did you do that? Why, why is that there? And I said, that's my pick holder. And I think it's weird, but it's no, it's completely functional. And it's my idea of making things easier for myself. And that's exactly what you should be doing. 
And honestly, that's going to be what helps you more in this next slide coming up about decluttering than anything. It's just making your life better and more efficient for you. It's your life. Make it better for you. You know, if you can go through your day where things are easy and then hard things will come in because that happens all the time, then you can deal with those hard things. Everything else you've got dialed in. Dial things in. Declutter. You know what? Let's get to that. So I got to start off this slide quickly with mentioning uh, for those that can actually see this. Uh, I have what I think is a gorgeous picture of a library. It has a spiral staircase that goes up to the top. There are books everywhere and they're all like managed perfectly. They're all like set up and organized. And I look at this picture and that actually makes me feel really good. This is my like ASMR as far as like sight, <laughs> seeing this. Uh, it's not audio, but I know. But yeah, I love seeing organized books and I, I just I don't know I like knowing where everything is and, and going to you know you can go to get it I would love to have a library in the house that I'm in I'd love to have just walls and walls of like bookcases so I know where everything is and honestly I'm uh, really looking into that and uh, yeah they're kind of pricey uh, ones that I've been looking at but this room eventually might get that sort of thing Hopefully we can, it can hold up because I have to probably screw them into the wall, but kind of an older house. So we'll see. But yes, my first point in this decluttering is how I love the organization of books. Now you can organize your mind like this. You can organize your thoughts. You can organize your life like you or with people organize books, like a library might organize things. And I think that's a good thing because it helps you know when you want something right? You know where to go for something. This sort of thing is when I look at this picture of just all these neat books and everything kind of laid out, and maybe the ones that are most important are open. Maybe the ones that someone might've been reading or the ones they wanted someone to look at are kind of like, you can see the covers and then the other ones are just kind of like maybe alphabetical and whatever else category so someone could access them easily. Somebody works this place, you ask them for a book, subject, whatever, if they can actually go, they'll probably use a computer, but they can literally also go over and find it. And that whole act of going and finding and looking through books. I mean, I used to go to the library just to walk through and randomly look at book covers and see what caught my eye. I, I knew I could look everything up on the computer and, and have it delivered and whatever. No, I preferred myself just to go explore. I come out with like seven books. I try to read as many as I possibly could. It's just that one thing where like, it, to me, that was always fun. I used to, as a child, I would have books. Books to me meant more than anything. It didn't matter what toy I had. Like if I had a book, I had a special place that I could hold it in my, I had like a little coat I had and I had a little pocket inside. I had a special book, these books I, a series I read. It was like an Indiana Jones, choose your own adventure thing. And I it was like, I think dozens of them. And I would keep it right there and I'd read it whenever I can, but it was always kept on me. And I just, that sort of thing, like having a book on me all the time felt like important. And I still feel that way. I buy a book on something. It's like that book is like the most important thing is information that I need. And it kind of is a way for me to declutter my mind because I could always read and take in information. It was like my quiet place. And like I mentioned, the second point in the slide, pleasure is a break. Pleasure is being able to take a break from your day-to-day -day stuff. If you're cluttered, if everything's cluttered, you're really not being able to take a break because you might have to think about where can I sit down? Where can I do this? I need to take a break and eat something. How am I going to do this? If you, you haven't prepared meals, if you don't, if you haven't decluttered everything, you, there's no break for you. You don't get any pleasure. Your, your break is basically more work. So you should declutter. You should try to make things neat and organized so you can figure out what you need to do. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, 
on this podcast. What can I sell or give away? I've been wondering about that. I've been looking around for things that I don't really use. I have a little thing right next to me right now. It's got uh, three compartments and it's kind of like junk drawers for music odds and ends. And honestly, I just want to take them and dump them out, give them away for those that can use things. I mean, some of the technology, some of the cables and stuff like that are not used anymore. Someone can use it. I did have quite an eBay uh, store at one point, uh, but uh, this, the people that buy things and then tell me it's broken and lie and they never send it back. And then they get refunded because of eBay's horrible policies that sort of burned me. And I just didn't want to do that anymore because I might as well just give things away to people I know rather than give it to a stranger who lies to me. And that's the whole thing. But I just want to give things away. I mean, what can I either sell so I can use some of this money to help declutter myself further? Or what can I just give away? You could look at your life and think about that too. Here's a good question. What is it worth to you to have an organized life? What is it worth to you to get in a vehicle if you drive and to know exactly where you're going and not have any hiccups on the way? Is it worth the price of owning a GPS or a smartphone if you don't have one because they usually have those built in? What about if you had to go to the grocery store and you had a perfect list and you followed it to a T and you got everything you needed and it was exactly what you thought it was going to cost. How would that work for you? What if you had to go buy something and you had exact change? Now, think, they think about these things, like it's everything seems, like what I'm describing sounds perfect, right? Sounds great. That's, that's being organized. You can have this happen. What is it worth to you to do that? You can buy a GPS for $50. I know people that do not want to ask directions. They don't like to get lost, but they also don't like to ask, you know, where is something because it goes out of their way. And yet they don't spend the money on getting a GPS. That means they never have to ask. And so there's little things that they could spend money on that would be worth, that would help organize themselves better. You know, buy a bookcase. Buy something that can just make things more organized for you. What, what is it in your life? I don't know what, it, what your life is, but think about what it, what it is you could use, how you organize where things are in your environment. Very simple. Organize your refrigerator. You know, organize things that you have access to that you use on a daily basis that makes it easier for you to access and to live because time is fleeting. You want things, you want to worry about the things that matter, not the things that don't. Your food, all this stuff, yeah, that matters, but it's not it doesn't matter as much as the other things in your life, like family, like your career, all of this stuff, how people view you. I mean, honestly, you've got a reputation, you've got a character, a personality, all of this stuff. That's important. The other stuff is just helping to maintain that and you should put some effort into that, but you should have that dialed in. And I say dialed in all the time because that, it's a really old saying, basically. I think it talks more about you know, people moving dials like I can do, making these microphones louder if I need to, whatever. But it comes to just making things, setting things so that you have them set so that you get a great outcome. And you can do that with decluttering things. And we all have clutter and we're always building clutter. So decluttering is a constant thing. But if you can get this like motivation to do this on a regular basis, it will become much less and you'll have much better time living. The last little point on this thing I wrote, out with the new and in with the old, which seems opposite, right? We always say out with the old and with the new, which I think is a horrible concept because some of the old things that we've been doing or that we own are the best things. The guitar that I've had for a long time, right? Using it again. And honestly, the newer instrument could care less about. It just doesn't fit me. You know, when I bring something into my life, it could be something as simple as a mouse. Honestly, it, it is a big thing to me. 
because I just don't like to accept more material into my life. I have to find out where it fit in. The first MP3 player I got, my father bought me an iPod Classic and they had the first Pirates of the Caribbean movie on it. It was whatever one, you can look it up when they kind of did that promotion. But that's a long time ago, right? 2005, whatever, 2004. And I did not open it for 30 days. I didn't want it. I didn't want that. I knew he spent around two, $300. I think he spent $300 on it. I had the receipt and I was like, I I don't want this. I, I can't accept this sort of thing from him. And I didn't open it. And then I, I had to convince myself that I did, I deserve something like that. And I had to know what this technology was about. You know, I use it on my computers, you know, for years, but I, I needed to know, like to have it on me and stuff like that. And I might as well learn about what Apple was doing because yeah, they were everywhere. So I started to do that. I got into podcasts. I got into listening to the Skeptics Guide to the Universe, which is like brand new then, surprisingly. It's a long time since since then, 2005. So, but I kept that. And even when I got a, a smartphone, uh, you know, a real smartphone, I got an iPhone 3G when that came out. I, I still didn't use that. I used the iPod Classic for all my podcasts. I was used to that process of plugging it in and using that. And I was just, and it just got to a point where I couldn't use it anymore because it just, it, it crashed a couple of times and then something happened with a screen battery was dead was you know didn't hold the charge and it just I had to I had to move to the new thing but I kept the old for a long time I accepted it accepted this piece of you know machinery that I used uh, with me for a while and yeah it takes me a while to adopt things yes my wrists have these things on it and, and, and these things might change because I want to update these things, but I just want more metrics. I want a, a better interface. This is about decluttering. This is about being able to do stuff that I need for exercise and stuff, but it, it helps me in my life. But otherwise, I don't want the new. You know, Things that I'm talking about have been around for a very long time. Human emotions, honestly, humans have not changed. Yeah, we have different skins, right? clothing we wear we have different whatever things that are outside uh, environments we've created but we're the same people we've been for a long time so you can read a book 60 years ago about human behavior 100 years ago and get insight on it just as much as you can get insight on someone who wrote a book recently you know if it's a good book then they've gone through all those older sources and they've kind of compiled things for you but it might not be. So you're decluttering how you do things might not be you getting rid of old stuff and putting new stuff in. It might be you're getting rid of the new stuff, the stuff that's superficial and keeping the old stuff that's important to you. Think about that. So here's a very quick rant called vegan food options in Maine. Kind of sad actually. So I had this little thing happening for the past four days. One of the things is that I had to travel 30 to 50 to whatever, an hour and a half away from where I lived, which meant I could, if I didn't plan out properly, possibly need food. Now, most of the time I did have food and I took care of myself, but uh, on two tiny occasions, I said, you know what, I'm gonna find something. I'm sure there's something I can have. Uh, there's not a lot of options, honestly, because here's the thing. As a vegan, I don't have animal products. I don't have cheese, milk, anything like that, butter, and so many vegetables are cooked in butter. If you order just vegetables, uh, I ended up with eating salads, uh, French fries, one place, French fries and a small side salad. And honestly, I had to get the fries that I knew that weren't cooked with wheat because they do that now too. But it was, uh, yeah, it was quite kind of troubling. Uh, I, I don't expect a place to have food to cater to me whatsoever, but I also need to have a game plan so I can go in and to tell people how I need them to prepare something. And I generally have to size up the person who's taking my order to see if they can convey that. Because 
I've had it happen a lot of times that they could not do that. And it's just kind of burned me from like going out to eat. And I don't like to eat out to eat anyways. I prefer the food I make, but it's just one of those things where it's like, wow, okay. This is another, like another thing I have to add to it. And if you're with other people, honestly, if they want to go to eat and they don't have the same issues that you have for dietary restrictions, then, you know, you kind of have to follow where they want to go. And that's where I have to become like a sleuth and figure out what I can eat. And wow. I think I had, uh, I think my basic meals in one day was just, were just salads <laughs> with, without any protein on it whatsoever. And honestly, I, I, this rant could go on and on and on talking about protein. Honestly, listen, do you know what protein is? Look it up restaurants. Okay. It's not so difficult to get a can of beans and to do something with that, you know, cook it a little while, heat it up in a microwave, put some paprika on it. There you go. That's protein and fiber for someone who is plant-based. That's pretty simple, right? Oh, if there's a lot more options and they're not expensive at all. Same thing with vegan or gluten-free bread. It doesn't take a wizard to make this sort of thing. Most of the population of the world lives off of rice, which is gluten-free. You can make bread from rice. I don't know why it seems so magical that it's hard to keep bread together because it doesn't have the gluten proteins. It, it, it's honestly, it's, it's not that you know, amazing. It's there's so many companies that have this right now. Get plugged in, get with the program restaurants. All right. Not a problem. Okay. It's going to be better for you too. Honestly, if you order that type of food, because generally those that have restriction, restrictive, uh, restrictive diets, the food that's made for them has more care put into it than the, than the mainstream food that's made. So even if I wasn't that way, I might even order that way, gluten-free, vegan, whatever, because it looks like more care is put into it. So I don't know. That's my little rant. You can, of course, write comments and say if you would disagree with me and tell me where I went wrong. I know I've got a few uh, logical fallacies possibly in there somewhat, but uh, yeah, it's just one of those things. It was tough. Well, thank you for joining me on show number 69. Thank you for being here for another motivational talk, I guess. Uh, I think it's good that we declutter our lives. I'm decluttering things all the time. In fact, I'm looking around me in my room right now. I like, eh, should I put that there? Should that be there? Why do I need that? It's, it's, a, it's a nonstop process. But if you can find some pleasure in that, I mean, honestly, you can get a lot out of it. If you think about it, if decluttering, you know, like cleaning a house, if, if cleaning where you live, wherever you live, if cleaning is a big process that you absolutely hate and you want to relegate that to one day a week, a very small span of time, you're not going to live in a very cleanly place. It's just that because you just, you need to make it part of your daily thing. Oh, I pick this up or I clean this after I use this and stuff decluttering all this stuff needs to be a little process that you, that you like doing and the only way to like doing something is to kind of create a habit out of it you're going to see the function out of it so i, I uh, challenge everybody if they need to listen to this episode again to, to re-listen and realize that it's coming from a place of like caring i want this i'm working on this too we're all working on this all the time i just keep working on it and get better at it and Try to live a life that's uncluttered with things that you don't need to put time and effort into. In other words, you don't need to put your mind on. Keep your mind for things that you need it for. I will see you next week.